Okay, so hello, my name is Sofia Alonso, and this is my extra credit video for Physics 1. So on February 4th of this semester, I attended a physics lecture. Um, at first, I was a bit skeptical, and I didn't think it would be at all of interest to me, but it actually ended up being pretty fascinating. So the lecture was given by Dr. Stephen Morris from the University of Toronto, and the lecture was called Pattern Formation in Nature. Why is the universe not boring? So basically, the lecture focused on the physics behind many of the different patterns that form in nature. He tried to explain why many of those happen. Um, and what was interesting about this lecture is that he really didn't have an explanation for many of the patterns that were discussed. He showed a lot of um, videos and pictures of stuff that like um, science really couldn't explain yet, and obviously he couldn't explain to us. They just stuff that he knew that happened. Um, so at the beginning of the lecture, the topic of entropy was introduced. Entropy is considered to be a measure of, the, of a system's disorder. So the second law of thermodynamics basically says that a system tends to prefer to have high entropy, or in other words, a system tends to be um, tends to go towards this order. That means that naturally one would tend to believe that if nature prefers entropy, patterns wouldn't form as commonly as they do in nature. However, this is definitely not the case. A lot of the patterns that form in nature, a lot of patterns do form in nature. And this enigma is the main topic of Dr. Stephen Morris's lecture. So one particular topic that I did find very interesting about this lecture was the spontaneous stratification of granular mixtures. For example, if you shake up a bottle, if you shake up a bottle of different sized um, part solid particles, you won't have the mix as you would if you have liquids. If you have two liquids in a bottle and they're of similar density and such, and you mix them up, um, you would have one. You would have them be mixed. However, in solids, you would have them stratify into different layers. Um, although I didn't completely understand this during the lecture, he did one particular demonstration that was really interesting, and that was the formation of this pattern. So the demonstration that he did consisted of pouring a mixture of different size and shape grains of sand into a container that resembled an ant farm. Um, he poured large, large and facetted um, grains of sand and small and rounder grains of sand through a funnel to form a sort of mound. Um, so the, the, the mixture would flow into a mound and as they were, as they, as they were poured into the ant farm thing and they would stratify into different layers. The smaller rounded grains of sand would go to the bottom first, while the larger more facetted grains of sand would flow on top of those, stratifying into striped alternating layers. So I didn't completely understand why this exactly happened, but I'm going to try to give my best explanation of what I remember. So if I remember correctly, the smaller rounder grains of, smaller, rounder grains of sand would flow first, right? So they would flow to the bottom. They would create a sort of barrier against the larger ones. So when the larger ones, um, the larger ones would kind of accumulate at the top and then once there was too many of them it would overflow and it would flow on top of the larger ones, on top of the smaller ones that were already there. So then the smaller rounder ones would just naturally flow on top of those uh, forming a layer and then eventually they would accumulate as well causing the same barrier to form causing the larger grains of sand to again the same mechanism of like they would accumulate sort of and then they would overflow in an avalanche sort of thing so something along those lines would happen. Sorry if it wasn't the best explanation. It's kind of a complicated concept. <laughs> but I found this really interesting. The sort of the pattern that would form, I found it really interesting. So I decided to look more into it. And I found an article that discussed the different types um, of patterns that would form with this type of um, different size grains and stuff. So this pattern that I just explained was called stratification, while a different type of thing would form that would call segregation if you just um, use sort of different grains. So if the smaller grains were more facetted, while the larger grains were less facetted or more rounded, a different type of pattern would form. In that case, you would get this pattern. So in this case, um, instead of having the smaller ones go to the bottom and having the larger ones go to the top, you would get the larger grains of sand in the bottom and the smaller ones would remain at the top. So it's just if you change something, um, if you change just a little bit about the about the grains, like in the in the other in the the example we sh we showed before, the small grains were round and the large ones were facetted, and in this last one that I just showed, the small grains were facetted and the large ones were round. If you just switch that around, you get a different pattern. So I found that pretty interesting. So this was a demonstration that he did during the lecture that I found most interesting. And another thing that I also found kind of fascinating that he talked about was the stuff that he couldn't explain. He presented a great amount of patterns that formed in nature that science could still find no explanation for. 
One such example is that of meme amounts. Um, these are meme amounts. The meme amounts are these little round mounds of sand that form the northwestern United States. It still isn't completely certain what forms them. There's a lot of different theories, which, which is kind of interesting because the theories that they have are like extremely divergent. There's um, a broad amount of uh, variety of theories um, concerning these meme amounts. So an example of one theory is that seismic activity would be to blame for these meme amounts. And then a different one is that gophers are actually the ones that cause them. So there's a lot of different theories concerning that. Um, so one very interesting thing about this lecture was actually hearing all the stuff that there still is to be discovered about this topic of pattern formation. And it's also pretty fascinating to hear a PhD in physics talk about all this stuff in physics that he can't understand and that basically can't be understood by scientists yet. So basically, in conclusion, nature is fascinating, and we still have a lot to learn about it, learn about it so it's pretty cool. And that concludes this video about discussing pattern formation in nature and why the universe is basically the opposite of being boring. Thank you.